God is good. Amen? Amen. And amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for one more day to give you the glory, the praise, and the adoration that you deserve. God, thank you for ordaining that we be here on this morning. God, we thank you for touching us with your finger of love and moving us to a place of being able to come together as a people and as a praying body. God, we thank you for what you're doing, what you continue to do, and what you will do. God, we thank you in advance. God, you've been so kind and so gracious to each and every one of us. We thank you for those who have served, those who have given their lives for our freedom. God, we thank you for their bravery. God, we thank you for the families who have made the sacrifices. God, we thank you for being so kind, so good, so merciful, so gracious to us. God, we thank you for just being God. And we turn this service over to you, God, to have your way in our lives. God, right now we ask for a touch of your anointing, of your grace and your mercy once again upon us. God, love us once again and through it all. God, we give you the praise and the adoration to your name, we say glory. Amen. Thank you for giving us your music. God bless you. Good morning, sisters and brothers. I greet you with the joy this morning and with the love of Jesus and pray that you will have a blessed and safe Memorial Day weekend. It is wonderful to be with you in service this morning. I am Reverend Garrett Jordan and our senior pastor is Reverend Braylon Scott Tagler. And I welcome you on behalf of the ministers, officers, and members of Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ. I greet you with the na from the nation's capital, a colony seeking to become the 51st state. Welcome. We hope that everyone listening have taken the opportunities to vaccination seriously. If you have not gotten vaccinated, look into doing so as soon as possible. The sooner, the quicker we will be able to get back together. In the meantime, we are still practicing social distancing for the moment, and we will continue to use these mediums to be together. We will officially reopen on the second Sunday in June, June 13th, Communion Sunday. 
You will be required to wear masks and socially distance, and our service will be at 10 a.m. We are inviting you to physically come back to worship. We will also continue to broadcast the service. So if you are not comfortable coming into the sanctuary and church facilities, or if you reside in another state, you can continue to join us via the internet. We will continue our programs and learning ministries during the week. You are invited to join us for Bible study on Tuesdays, Wednesdays for our dial-up and power-up prayer call, our Thursday evening midweek service has recessed until the fall, and our spiritual grounding sessions are Friday at noon. The week this week, Dr. Edith Guffrey, former Associate General Minister of the United Church of Christ and currently Conference Minister of Oklahoma and Kansas, will be our presenter. Join us in one or all of these dynamic sessions. We are physically in the same place, 5301 North Capitol Street, Northeast in Washington, D.C. We are thankful and honored that you are joining with us this morning. We are a church of deep history, progressivism, and liberation. We have become a community of faith since 19, oh, excuse me, 1881. Yes, this is our 140th anniversary year. As we reopen for services, you are welcome to worship with us. And if you have been blessed by these services over the last year, we hope that you will join with us in the work of love, the passion for justice, and the mission of Jesus from this corner of the world. As a community of faith, we remain committed to justice, hope, and light, and shall trust the presence and power of God until the change that so desired comes. We are all saddened and shocked by the brutality inflicted on the Palestinians in Gaza and in the occupied territories and even those living in so-called Israel. We are glad for the ceasefire, but that is not the end of the story. For many of us, we are tired of the same political jargon. The president utters that Israel has the right to defend itself, but the abuser and, excuse me, the president utters that Israel has the right to defend itself, but defense is one thing and offense is quite another. Israel has been an oppressive abuser and there is no other way to fairly view this. And we join in solidarity with Palestinian people in their struggle to be free and to hold Israel and the U.S. accountable. As we worship, we think about these things and even study these things because worship is not only getting right in our spirits and heart, but also making the world right and getting right with God. Worship is a time to gain perspective, to refuel, and to regain strength in the continued work ahead. We continue working towards freedom, justice, and wholeness. We continue to work towards the manifestation of the perfection of God. We embody what Fannie Lou Hamer said, nobody is free until everybody is free. Amen. Come worship and lift praises because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of God. Let us call ourselves to worship. God, thank you for appointing that this time we will give to you and that we are present in this. We ask that you be present in us. Right now we turn this service over to you. Have your way in our hearts, God. Have your way in our lives, God. Manifest your gifts in us right now, God. Lift us higher in this space, God. Lift us as we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, you've been so good, so kind, so gracious. God, we love you. We lift you high. I ask you to bless the man of God who's bringing the word forth, God. Bless the musicians. Bless all those who take part in the service. God, bless the hearers and the doers of your word. God, we look to you from which cometh all our help. God, we thank you, and we bless your name forever. Amen. Amen. Watch over us, amen. It was all night, it was all day. And the angels spared us, and we got up early this morning, and we made our way into the house of worship. It could have been the other way, 
But God saw fit that all night and all day, yes, the angels kept watching over us. Tracy Rowe. Services are being planned and will be held here at Plymouth. Dwayne Rowe is the son of uh, our late Deacon Yancey Rowe. We pray for Ida Jackson, who is with her daughter and Frederick Merrill. Please pray for Donald Mornay. We pray for the brother of Janetta Carr and Hazel McCray, who is home recovering at this time. We pray for his full recovery. Please keep the Lord's Tucker in your prayers as she recovers. Pray for Rhett Lucas and Joe Johnson as they continue to heal. We pray for the healing and the recovery of Deacon Gloria Norris. Give thanks to God for a successful procedure and speedy recovery for our minister of music, Ernest Hargrove. Amen. Amen. We pray that God will continue to intervene in all the situations in a bold and healing way. We pray for those who are ill, depressed, and for people feeling the anxiety of the times. We pray for people who are depleted and needy to be lifted up and out of sorrow and despair. We pray for people looking for a positive breakthrough in their lives. We pray for others in all the conditions and circumstances another may be in. We pray for the redemption of a nation and that it might rid itself from hatred and the stain of racism and white idolatry. We pray for those who are 
unemployed, laid off, and underemployed pray that we all might be healed in body, mind, and spirit. Pray, y'all. Work and pray some more. God, we come before you on this morning. Thank you for your goodness and for your mercies and for your tender loving kindness. For it was all night and all day. Angels were stationed all around us and we were able to get up. We found ourselves clothed and in the right mind. We made it out to the house of worship for some of us and others of us are participating virtually, but no. No matter what, Lord, we come. We come, some of us, full of frustration due to the present condition of this country. Some of us are anxious because we don't know what the future holds. Some of us are upset, even angry, if you will, those who are trying to suppress the vote. No matter what, Lord, we maintain faith in you. Knowing full well that you promise to be with us always, even until the ends of the earth. And so come with me, everything's going to be all right. Why? Because you promised it, Lord. Yes. And as you continue to work through us, as we continue to work for justice, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, oh Lord, that you will not leave us nor forsake us. So we keep on keeping on. And for this we say thank you. We thank you for those who have given up their lives in the fight for freedom of this country. Even though, Lord, we have not realized for many of us the freedom that was fought and died for, we bless your name, Lord, that there is still a remnant, Lord, seeking justice. As a matter of fact, Lord, as as we remember our responsibility to one another, we thank you for blessing us here at Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ. But we are a people who are determined, Lord, to bring justice to some time a cruel and mean world. The people of Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ planted on this here, on this corner, Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for our Allowing us to have the kind of ministry that speaks truth to power. And every now and then we find ourselves having to do some things to bring about that power. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for propping him up on every leading side. We thank you for bringing him through moments of healing, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, because we understand that if it had not been for you and you being on his side, Lord, we, that it could have gone the other way, but you spared him to, to continue to be with us here at Plymouth, and for this, we say thank you. We continue to thank you for your mercies and for your, your grace. We pray for each member of this congregation. We pray for its leadership. Oh, God, we pray for all who have a special interest in this ministry. Lord, we ask that you cover them with your Spirit, your power, your Holy Ghost power, Lord. Lord, we pray for every member that has been lifted up, every name that's been called on this morning. Stop by convalescent homes, hospital rooms, and stop by wherever you find folk who are dealing with illnesses and whether it be in the body, mind, or the spirit, let them know that somebody here at the covenant at Plymouth Congregation or United Church of Christ is praying for them. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask you right now to keep us forever in your will. Keep us, oh Lord, steady on the battlefield. Keep us, Lord, focused on what you would have us to do, and that is that we love everybody. That we celebrate all who comes to the doors of Plymouth Congregation or United Church of Christ. Lord, and Lord, every now and then we find ourselves thinking some things we shouldn't think, do some, doing some things we shouldn't do, some places we shouldn't be. For that, Lord, we ask for your divine forgiveness. Forgive us, oh Lord, because at times we are frail and we yield to our own understanding. 
Lord, we thank you for the redeeming power of Christ. Now, Lord, as we come to the end of this prayer, we do so knowing, Lord, that, oh God, that there will come a day when all of us will have to lay down. When all of us will have to give up our last breath. When all of us will have to stand before you. All we want to hear is, well done, thy good and a faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, but until then, Lord, we we are committing ourselves to keep on doing what you've called us to do. Until then, Lord, we will keep on keeping on in faith. trial and a moment of, of temptation and a moment of good times and in bad. But no matter what, we're still here. We're still on this corner. We're still praising God. We're still giving God our very best. We're still saying hallelujah. We're still lifting up our hands and we are determined to keep on keeping on. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise if you will. So we welcome all into this place. And good morning all. Good morning. good morning. I want to just uh, extend the peace of Jesus Christ to you as it has already been extended to you. But in the name and the love of Jesus, I welcome you to worship today, but also extend to you the love and the peace and the joy that we know in Jesus. It's just good to be in the house of prayer and praise one more time. It's good to meet this Sunday morning on this Memorial Day weekend. We pray that people will be safe and sound in all of their endeavors on this weekend, and we pray that you will continue to feel the blessings of God over you, surrounding you, and holding you up. Welcome to Plymouth. Uh, Marion Peel is away with family uh, this weekend, but she still can't leave it alone because I see her sending messages <laughs> on the chat 
and thanking everybody for uh, being uh, filling in for her. And uh, I want to I want to thank uh, James Stafford, uh, who has yeah. filled in for her and is here uh, uh, making sure that we remain on Facebook. Thank you, James, for just doing that today. And I want to also thank Wendy Farmer, who who texted me this morning to let me know that she was on her way. If we needed backup. Uh, to work in terms of the social media and the uh, and the video, and I want to thank you, Wendy, for just being so gracious with your time. Amen. And I want to just welcome her husband, uh, Bruce, Bruce Farmer, into uh, Plymouth Church this morning. He's going to lift up our scripture a little bit later on. It's just good to be in the house of prayer with all of these wonderful spirit-filled people. This week, uh, uh, Ernest uh, Hargrove had some surgery, and. Uh, Went into the hospital. He flirted with all the nurses, and uh, and uh, he came back out of the hospital. And he's recuperating and recovering. And he is with us this morning on that piano. Ernest, let folks know you're here. lifting up prayers of thanksgiving and his brother Earl Hargrove is here also to back him up. Earl, welcome to Plymouth again this morning. God bless you. And we have also brother uh, Isaiah Galloway on the drums. Isaiah, you over there? so good to have this young man with us Sunday after Sunday and we're just so blessed by his presence and his willingness to be engaged in, in the ministry. want to thank uh, Reverend uh, Garrett Jordan. want to thank uh, Reverend Kenneth King who is the pastor of New Hope Baptist United Church of Christ that is here at Plymouth Church and we are blessed to have that wonderful congregation here at Plymouth Church under the leadership of Reverend uh, Kenneth King. It's just so good to be in this place together, amen, amen. and rejoicing together in the blessings of our Lord. Uh, so I want to just uh, uh, ask you to consider uh, spending at least, at least, at least one more additional hour with us during the week. You're invited to join us in Bible study on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We are studying the book of Revelation. Uh, our spiritual grounding session is on Friday at 12 noon. And this week we will have as our presenter uh, Dr. Eve Guffey, who is uh, 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 the former Associate General Minister of the United Church of Christ and is now Conference Minister of Kansas, Oklahoma Conference of the United Church of Christ. So she will be with us in, uh, in our spiritual grounding session, so please join in. Now some of these gatherings will take place on the GoToMeeting platform and others will take place through our Facebook and web page. Our Wednesday mornings at 6 a.m. dial up and power up prayer line is a dial in gathering, and we thank Reverend Garrett Jordan for his leadership on this prayer line. Thank you very much, Reverend Jordan. All this information is in your e newsletter. Uh, now, if you do not get the church's e newsletter, then that simply means that you're not on the email list, and you can get on the email list by emailing your email address to Plymouth Congregational at yahoo.com or directly to me, Reverend Hagler at g-s-h-a-g-l-e-r at verizon.net. Important information is distributed through that e-newsletter. Now coming up, next Sunday, is that right? Next Sunday Amen. is Ernest Hargrove's 50th yeah. anniversary as Minister of Music here at Plymouth Church. Hey, God. Yeah. Next Sunday, right? Yeah. Su next Sunday, yeah. June the 6th, is that celebration. At what time? What time? Four. At 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Uh, come and bless Ernest with your presence and bless and be blessed with the music that will be lifted up that day. A celebration will take place. And the W. Henry Green Friends of Music Society is asking that you support the anniversary of Ernest Hargrove by making a gift of $50 or 
in recognition of 50 years. Of course, we appreciate whatever you can give. You can send it through one of the apps or write a check and mail it or bring it in. Just make certain you note it as Ernest's 50th anniversary. <coughs> Pastor New Hope is going to have a little light fair right before. Okay. So just a little light fair. So if you get here a little early, New Hope will have a little something for you to eat. Come here and say that louder so the folk can hear you. <laughs> Set it back there mumbling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. New Hope will be having a little light fair for those who get here early, have a little something to eat. Um, and then come on in, and we're going to stop and worship. But if you get here right about 3.30, we'll have a little something for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. See, that's what I'm talking about, that, uh, uh, that we, we are here together under this roof. Amen. Yeah. Plymouth and New Hope Baptist United Church of Christ. And we want to thank you, Reverend King, for your leadership around that. So celebrate Ernest's 50th anniversary yeah. next next morning, morning. next Sunday. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and uh, <laughs> he is he, he came to the church. He must have came when he was two. So he's about 52. Uh, no, I'm just joking. We know that he's an old man, but we we just uh, thankful for his longevity and for his commitment. He came when he five. Somebody said. Now, also remember and plan to be with us in the sanctuary on June the 13th for our coming back together service. This is our communion Sunday, and we will gather at 10 a.m. for services, still wearing our face masks and engaging in social distancing. The services will be different because we will continue to live stream and want to make sure that we are relevant to those in the sanctuary as well as those who are watching online. If you notice, the services have gotten rather streamlined in our live streaming, and we will continue with some of that. Pray that our coming together will be a blessed success. Pray. Now, we also want to thank all the faithful members and friends who continue to generously give to the church. It really uh, demonstrates how people want to keep a liberating and progressive interpretation of God's word alive and thriving. We thank all the people who always send in their tithes and contributions Amen. through one of the methods that have been made available and many give even as I make this appeal and thank you. Now this is the fifth Sunday and on the fifth Sunday we receive an additional offering. This offering supports our benevolence ministry. What is that, you may ask? It is a fund that is administered by the diaconate that helps people going through temporary need. Sometimes people fall behind on electric bills, in rents, need money for transportation to work. The need varies, and this is one way that the church can respond to the need. You do not have to be a member of the church to access the fund. But there are needs to be, but, but it still needs to be credible, credible in terms of your request. And the deacons will document your request to make sure that the funds are going in the appropriate and needed places. Please be generous with your giving, your tithes and your offerings, and with the benevolence offer. Now you can give through the church's website, www.plymouth-ucc.org. You can make your tithe, contribution, and donation there. All the other methods are given, are listed on that webpage. You can give by cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign Plymouth DC. Dollar sign Plymouth DC. You can give through Givelify and find us as Plymouth Congregational Church, Washington DC. Now, if you pay your bills through your bank's online bill pay, Consider making Plymouth one of those payments. The bank will even pay the postage for you. Or you can mail your tithes and contributions to Plymouth UCC, 5301 North Capitol Street Northeast, Washington, D.C., 20011. We thank you for your love of the church, for your embrace of the good news of Jesus, and for blessing this liberating manifestation of God's word. Let us pray together as you prepare to give. Lord, we want to thank you for the gifts that are given, the tithes that are brought in to the house of God. We just thank you, Lord, because that means that there is a recognition that everything that we have has come from the Lord. 
And therefore, the clothes on our backs, Lord, and even the food on our table is a gift from God. And so as it comes this time of giving, we render back a portion of that which we have been blessed with. God has provided, and therefore we provide that it might continue to be passed on and bless the church, and the church might bless the world. Lord, allow us to give because we have been given to. Allow us to give as an expression of our love because we have been loved by the Creator. Oh, yeah. And so, Lord, we render back a portion of that, and we ask that as we give, you bless us, Lord. Bless our living, bless our lives, bless our endeavors. We pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Kumbaya. Scripture this morning is coming from Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy! Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Yeah. And for the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, then flew one of the seraphim to me, having in a hand a burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. Oh, yeah. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin forgiven. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. Oh, yeah. All right. Precious 
excited that they're in uh, Plymouth Church. And I want to greet uh, some of our deacons who are here this morning, Deacon uh, Peterson and uh, Deacon Harris and Deacon Doswell. Uh, it's good to see y'all faces this morning. It's a blessed time to be together, to be in the house of prayer and praise, and thank you for being here. If you would join me in a moment of prayer, let us pray together. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for blessing us today with this word, with this scripture that is open to us, Lord, and for us. And allow us to seek out in our heart, spirit, and mind what it may be saying to us in this time in which we stand, in the moments in which we live. But one thing is always certain, Lord, and that is that you are the potter and we are the clay. So mold and shape us as you would have us to be until we are perfectly fitted for your kingdom and able to call ourselves disciples of Jesus the Christ. Now as we come to this time of teaching, Lord, you hone it, you shape it, you develop it, 
You send it forth as you see fit. Allow it all to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Our Lord and our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. 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 I want to speak for uh, a little and teach for a little on the subject, the maker makes it right. All right. The maker makes it right. Now, this text is dated, opening with the words, the year that King Isaiah died. Isaiah is marking the date, the moment in history, and giving context and probably even content for his call. He is being called forth into the prophetic ministry. The work of a prophet is to sound the word of God in the temple and in the public arena. The year that King Isaiah died is more than a historical mark. Uh, uh, but is telling us something about the times, the tension, and that God has a word in that historical moment and a word that applies now. Isaiah died in the year 742 before the Common Era. So we have some indication of what was going on. King Isaiah, ro uh, Isaiah rose to the throne when he was 16 years of age and served as co-regent with his father, Amaziah. Isaiah would rule for 52 years, the kingdom of Judah. The earlier part of Isaiah's reign seemed to have been a prosperous and successful one. Under the influence of the prophet Zechariah, he was directed in ways that were pleasing to the Lord. As it says in 2 Kings chapter 15, verse 3, and. 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 4 and 5, he did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, yeah. He was intrigued by inventions and implements of war. He engaged in war with the Palestinians and the Arabians, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 26. But he seems to enter a conflict with the priests near the end of his reign. Kings always wanted people to see them as God. And therefore, kings often deified themselves so that people would be obedient to their commands, decrees, showing deference and pledging loyalty. Now, we've been studying Revelation in Bible study. And we, and we see where the underlying struggle in the book of Revelation is between God the creator of heaven and earth, and God with a small g that is the emperor of Rome. Think, for example, Henry VIII, king of England, wanted to have ecclesiastical authority oh, yeah. and not have his sovereign rule dictated or criticized by any other authority. The king felt that he was king and resisted the authority of the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope, particularly when it came to the divorcing of his wives. In response to the criticism of the Pope, he established the Church of England, and the king made certain that in the organization of the Church of England that he was over it. Oh, yeah. This is a form of deification. <laughs> I raise this issue because one of the problems that emerged with the rule of Uzziah was not only did he deify himself, but was accused of attempting to usurp the station and authority of the priest. He took hold of the censer that was entrusted to the priest. Uzziah entered the temple to burn incense himself on the altar that was reserved for the priest only. And the high priest, Azariah, confronted him, according to Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 18, confronted him with a band of 80 priests saying, quote, it is not for you, Isaiah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Oh, yeah. Now, according to Josephus, the Jewish historian, Isaiah immediately upon that confrontation became infected with leprosy, and was isolated for the rest of his reign until he died in that year. The death of Uzziah is the historical marker 
at the beginning of Isaiah's ministry. Isaiah found himself in a mysterious place. When you look and listen to the text, witnessing the holy occurrences, the incense-filled sanctuary, scenting the presence of God. And he peered into the holy list of scenes, and it was so awesome and so magnificent that only the hem of God's robe filled the temple. All right. Not the robe itself, but look at the text. The hem of his robe. It was an immense scene and in an immense place. The immensity of the place could almost not be described, but it was not immense enough to contain God. It was big, but it wasn't big enough for God. It was a cavernous, but it wasn't large enough to even contain God, and therefore God's hem on the end of God's robe filled it. The hem of God's robe filled the place. And as the text goes on, it says seraphims were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. Now, if you go with the scene here, there was lots of activity. Now, do not take the scene as a literal one, but as an interpretive expression. Because the writer and the narrator wants you, the listener or reader, to understand that this season, this scene, even though described, is beyond the ability to describe adequately. You see, it is a place where God is. How, how, how can a human being with human language describe the place where God is? So, so the writer is trying to get you to understand this scene, the power of it, the immensity of it, wow. and that it was beyond even the, the writer's comprehension. Oh, yeah, or yeah. There's lots of activity going on. Seraphims are a type of heavenly angel found in Christian, Jewish, and Muslim traditions. It is considered the highest order of the nine-fold celestial hierarchy associated with light, passion, and purity. Mm. The writer describes them as each having six wings and two covered their feet and two covered their faces and with two they flew. This is an awesome scene. This is a scene in another realm, in a holy of holies and in the presence of God. Then Isaiah hears one seraphim calling to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. Now there is a loudness to the scene. Can't you feel it? Uh, The doors are shaking. The foundations are trembling and the squawks of these birds or these angels are not the squawks of small birds but of large ones and they call holy 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 is the lord of hosts the earth is full of his glory all right this was the moment of isaiah's consecration as a prophet Now, of course, with all this happening, Isaiah declares that he is not worthy enough to be there, to be called to such a purpose. Indeed, as Isaiah stands there, he is a representative of the people. He's a representative of the government. He is a representative of the king and kings, whoever they may be. And he feels his unworthiness and failure on behalf of all of them. Oh, yeah. You see, when we stand before God, we do not stand just for ourselves, but we stand in the stead of others. We bear the sins of others. We bear the failures of the society around us, and we see ourselves as being collectively burdened and condemned because of the sins of others. Oh, yeah. Now, this is the theological construct of these scriptures, which is different 
than the capitalistic, individualistic approach to scripture, salvation, and damnation that we have been taught and conditioned with. Salvation is not just for self or about self. Just like damnation is also not individualistic but collective. It can be understood in this way. That one bad apple All right. spoils the whole batch. One bad cop All spoils right. the whole batch. There you go. Right? The, the, the fact is, it is a collective sin that requires a collective purge. That's All right. right. No, no, if you notice the text, I, I'm not going to feel here there is a collective understanding in this scripture. This means that the sin of the nation is my sin. Oh, yeah. The inability of the nation to deconstruct white idolatry is my sin. The funding of rogue states like Israel in their campaign to commit genocide against the Palestinian people is my sin. Yeah. Continued police killings of black people right. is my sin. Even when the president acts in commission or omission, oh, all right. it is my sin. Now all this means is that when we come to God, we come as an offering. We come as an offering from the people. We come as an offering into the presence of God. And as an expression of of atonement for their sins and their failures and their shortcomings. This means that we are agents when called to God, convincing a people and a village, a nation and world to repent and turn to God because our very salvation depends on it. Isaiah did not stand there by himself. I want you to hear the text. But he stood with the sins of Isaiah. Every king's sin was upon him. Every person's stain was upon him. Every Hamlet's village failure was upon him. He stood there as an offering before the throne of God. No wonder the words came off his lips. Woe is me. I am lost for I'm a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, oh, yeah. Lord of hosts. Now he mentions that he is lost. He is a person with unclean lips. Now being entrusted to form in his mouth the most sacred and holy words of God. And he also declares, and yet I have seen the real king. Not Uzziah. Because it's in the year that Uzziah dies. But I've seen the Lord of hosts. The king of kings. The creator of heaven and earth. You see the call to God is an offering. Mm. That offering is to step away from the brokenness of the world. The deal making of the world. And the deference to worldly power. And to surrender to heavenly power. To be a healer of the world's brokenness. And to expose the deals that are made with the devil. We each are an offering. The prophet was not going to be a temple priest. But the prophet was to bear the word, the teaching, the commands and demands of God into public places. Oh, yeah. And into public arena. Oh, yeah. The words of the prophet are often piercing to the soul. Threatening to the kings and other leaders. And demands the righteousness of God. Isaiah said in reaction to the call. And the task ahead. Woe is me. I'm lost. I'm a man or person with unclean lips. From a people with unclean lips. With this confession. And with his humility. The scene opens into this mysterium tremendum. This tremendous mystery. One of the seraphims flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. And the seraphim touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Yeah. A live coal was taken from the altar of incense, the same altar that Isaiah tried to usurp for himself. But this time it was the 
talons of the angel and not the hands of a king. Oh, yeah. This God, this time God was choosing who God was choosing instead of a king choosing himself. This time the act was an act of contrition and humility and confession and all of Isaiah's sins were blotted out and all the guilt was gone. This is how the maker makes things right. This is how the maker makes people right. It takes a heart, a head, and a spirit that recognizes that we are not perfect, that we might be smart, but we are not necessarily wise. Mm. And we may have power, but your power is paltry compared to God. Oh, yeah. And dare, dare, dare to get right with God so that God can make you right. The maker can make you right. Isaiah stood in the presence of God, confessing his brokenness, his fears, the world's brokenness, humanity's sinfulness, and as an offering for humanity, he stands before the throne of grace and goodness, and he hears the voice of, God, of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? You see, the offering was ready. The offering named Isaiah was made right by the maker and was now ready to go share a word, speak a word, and teach a word to a world that is just like he was, woeful and unclean from a place that was unclean and now made right. He is called to offer himself as an offering of the rightness of God to a world that is so wrong. Yeah. The voice of the Lord asked, Whom shall I send? Oh, yeah. And who will go for us? And Isaiah finally responds, Here I am. Here I am. Ah. Here I am. Huh. Send me. Send me. You see, what I'm getting at is that we see in this text that we are that kind of offer. Or at least we should be that kind of offer. Yeah. Yeah. When we come to God, we come to get fixed up. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we come to the maker, we come to be made right. Maybe not perfect, but we come to be made better. When yeah. we come yeah. to the yeah. maker, we come to be rehabbed. We come to be oh, yeah. reconditioned. We come to be refitted. We come to be re-educated. We come to be remade. We come to be re-energized. We yeah. come to be reborn. We want the maker to make us right. Yeah. Jesus came so that we could understand that it is not really that hard to be made right. We must at first believe that we're worthy of the goodness of God. We first must believe that we're worthy yeah. to be fixed yeah. up. We must first believe that we're worthy from our uncleanness to get clean. We got to believe first of all that God made us in God's image. <laughs> the second thing that we must believe is that God is not far off right. and God is not aloof and so Jesus came to teach us and to reach us and to tell us that the maker can make you right oh, the yeah, maker yeah. can make you right the maker can make any person and any situation right Jesus came to show us the love that God has for us and that anyone, everyone who wants God can get to God and be made right. That means whatever you're going through, whatever yeah, yeah. situation you're facing, it doesn't have to remain. You can be made right. In your brokenness and in your despair, it doesn't have to remain that way. You can be made right. In, 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 in your depression and in your sorrow, yeah, yeah. it doesn't have to be, remain that way. Same. You can be made right. Right. Oh, yeah. When you've been knocked down, you don't have to stay down because God tells us that we can be made right. The maker can make any person and take any situation and make it right. Jesus came to show us the love that God has for us and that everyone who wants God can get to the Lord and be made right. Yes, sir. Jesus came to show us what the love of God is like and to experience the faithfulness of the Lord. Just think, Jesus went to a cross. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 
The world thought that was the end of the story, and yet God did not leave him. Jesus went into the bowels of hell. And surely folks thought that it was over. He had gone so far down into hell that there was no help for him. But God did not leave him. Yeah. What does it say in the Psalm, the 139th Psalm? You can make your bed in Sheol. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. I am there. You can take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest reaches of the sea. And even there, ah. my hand shall hold you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus went into hell and God did not leave him. Jesus was sealed in a cold stone tomb and God did not leave him. But God loved him so much that God reached in and took his broken body and mended it. He, his wounded side and his pierced hands and, and feet and healed them and put him back together and breathed the holy breath of God back into him and when he got that breath into him he rose up from the dead God can fix anything God can make it right Jesus showed us that the maker can fix everything anything and all things and so sisters and brothers as we come into the presence of God with unclean lips. Come into the presence of God with a broken spirit. Come into the presence of God coming from a people with broken spirit and coming from a people with unclean lips. Yeah. And stand before our God screaming, woe is me because woe is us. Woe is me because woe is us. Yes. I, I, I'm not worthy to be standing here. And out of that confession, God says you are. Yeah. The moment that we confess to God and come with a contrite spirit, he's ready to fix us up. When we come out of our brokenness and we stand before God and say, well, Lord, I need you to yeah, yeah. get right because I can't get right on my own, then he's there yeah. to fix you up. You see, in this text, he, he's standing before the altar with unclean lips. Not because it's his lips, but because he come from a people with unclean lips. Standing there as an offering so that he can be used to make the world right for God. As an offering to go forth with a thus says the Lord and to teach the world. And to take the world and move it towards God's righteousness. To believe that one person can do something. Yeah. Why? Because one person plus one person plus one person oh, yeah. plus one person That's right. plus one person ah. is not one anymore. One person plus one person plus one person plus one person, plus one person called before God, standing with God, understands now that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Sit, sit. You see, the maker makes it right, yeah. if we believe. So as you stand before the presence of the Lord, hmm. as you stand before the Spirit of God, as you stand Today, before the righteousness of God, as you stand right now before the grace of God, as you stand right here, wherever you are in the, under the mercy of God, in this moment, stand up and get ready and say, here I am, yeah, yeah. send me. Here I am, send me. I come from an unclean people, but I come cleaned up by God. I come from a broken people, but I come mended by God. Oh, yeah. I come from a hopeless yeah. people, but I come filled with the hope of God. Here I am, Lord. Yeah. Now, send me to go forth into the world. Yes, sir. You see, you see, social justice, it is what I'm going to get at. Social justice is not something that's separate from the word of God. People always want to say, oh, what they deal with politics. Well, if you look at this text, he's being fixed up in the prophetic ministry to be sent forth. Oh, yeah. For God has a word for the world. 
God has a word in the world. God has a word that goes into the dark places in the world. God has a word that goes into the broken places in the world. God has a word that goes into the broken hearts in the world. God has a righteous word that goes into the unrighteous places in the world. God has a heart that goes into the spirit of those who have lost their heart. Here I am. Here I am. Here we are. Send us. Here we are. Send us yes, God. into the mercy of God. If you're home right now, or wherever you are, and you've not yet confessed that you need God in your life, it's time to do so. Say, come in, Lord, fix me right now. Come in, Lord, make me right now. Come in here, Lord, and heal me right now. Yeah. Touch me right now, Lord, if I need to be touched by you. Lord, make me right. Lord, make me whole. Lord, lift yeah, me up. Yeah. Lord, bless me. God is available. Just simply ask. Yeah. Simply ask the Lord come and touch you right now. And feel the power and the love of God. Let us pray. Oh, make us, make us. Make us right. Make us whole. Heal us and bless us and sustain us. Lord, we are in your presence now. Give to us an outpouring of your salvation, of your hope. Help us to understand that we are an offering from our community and from our families and from our homes and from our places. We are an offering into the presence of God to get things right, to make things right for the coming of our Lord. That's your job. That's your call. Give your hearts to the Lord. And understand that God will go with you wherever you go. Amen. 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 I surrender all. I surrender all. All to be my blessing.
peace of God be with you always. Amen. All right.